My name is Megan McLean and I'm the HR Administrator with Sue. We provide digital solutions to clients, to businesses. So whether that be through app development, website development, through strategy. My role is people strategies. So whether that entails recruiting, I like to say office counselor sometimes, performance management, training and development, general morale upkeep. Um, that's sort of how I would consider my role at Zoom. Every day is different and I know often everyone will probably say that, but it does look different every day because people have different needs. So whatever that might be um, can dictate what your day might look like. So you might have this perfect plan of like, oh, I have a recruitment meeting then or people strategies or a couple of check-ins with employees. Um, that can sort of all flip on a dime depending on what people's needs or the business's needs are. In a nutshell, essentially it would be sort of um, recruitment, check-ins with people on their performance management, looking at training, administrative party planning, you know, we're, we're also like a big piece of what we do. It has to do with also just morale and um, staff culture, which is important. Obviously with COVID as well, it sort of shifted towards a lot of health and safety focus, you know, which ends up taking a lot of our time as well. One of our biggest challenges was to accommodate both people that were virtually at home or attending from the office because we did have still sort of a bare bones staff coming to the office. So trying to keep that joint, you know, fluid and fun for everybody and engage everybody was a big challenge, but I think we managed to pull it off. This is my first HR job in tech. So it's incredibly intimidating because it's an industry that I knew very little about and you feel like everybody around you is smarter than you <laughs> or knows something that you don't. Um, but you know, HR is HR is HR is HR. And it's sort of just learning what makes people tick, what motivates them, what gets them excited to get out of bed every day and come to work, um, what keeps them here, what lures them here in the first place. So just tapping into culture and people in general is just part of the trade or part of the craft of HR, I would say. Tech is challenging because you don't, you know, whether that's like taking notes or Googling after the meeting for words that you don't understand. So you just try to keep up to date as much as you can, as best as you can, and just continue to learn on your own to, to try to be tapped into the, the language around tech. I can't necessarily speak to tech in like a very general sense. I can certainly speak to the tech people at Zoo. And we've really um, retained and drawn in people that are incredibly autonomous and act like owners, which as an HR person is like the absolute dream because people are just driven by their own desire to succeed and their team to succeed and Zoo to succeed. So they're incredibly self-motivated. They are disciplined. They are eternal learners. They're always going above and beyond to find out the newest tech trends and what's kind of, kind of coming down the pipe. So they're incredibly passionate about what they do. So I've seen that like fairly consistent as a through line for all of our staff, which is makes it really exciting to be a part of. You know, first and foremost, start developing that skill on the side. See if it's even of interest to you, whether that be like take a little like YouTube coding and course or, you know, start developing a little website on your own. If there's a genuine interest in it, it will sort of become um, a, a hobby and then be perhaps a career path for you. And then start getting pulling these little hobbies of yours into a portfolio because that's what people are going to start looking for um, out of the gates. But before you're going to commit a bunch of time and resources to this in post-secondary, make sure you enjoy what you do because you're going to be here 40 hours a week. You know, so you so you should love it or like it at least. But Deidre and I, my colleague, we talk about this at length, and it's not necessarily anybody that's a cookie cutter, but somebody that is you know, has an interest in learning, is humble enough to ask questions because there is a huge learning curve regardless if you're fresh out of school and taking a degree or a two-year diploma. I would just say ensure that you come as a learner and just willing to have a thirst for knowledge, ask good questions and be humble about what you don't know. Also attention to detail, analytical thinking, you know, problem solving. If there's something awry, do you want to go dig down a rabbit hole to try to find out what it is? Um, knowing time versus value that also sort of comes with the, tr the craft and the trade. You know, you do want a bit of a base level of technical ability, but we also hire for person and train for skill. We do deal with clients at the end of the day. We do, we do have teamwork and we're a collaborative work environment. So if you can't get along with one another, that's a problem, you know? So um, ensuring there are some people skills involved as well. I mean, are you asking me questions? Are you interested in Zoo? Like, have you done a little bit of your homework? Are you coming prepared? Preparation is key. Knowledge is power, you know? So if you know about Zoo and you're telling me you have an interest in Zoo, if, if, if you're keen to be here, we're keen to have you here. So we want people that want to be here too. 
And like I said, if they were like, well, I've been doing this on the side, if they have examples of their work or of their hobbies or their interests, you know, that goes a long way. And a bit of follow-up doesn't hurt, then we'll remember you, you know, then you're in our contact base. It's those people that have a little bit of nerve, and I know it's hard to do as a high school student for sure, but to like approach the, the, the teacher or, or sorry, approach me at a career fair and say hello and make a little bit of an impression. You know, I just encourage people to just to try to be a little bit bold once in a while because, I mean, if you don't advocate for yourself, who will? So I just say just be bold.